All right, everybody, welcome back to Binary Adventure, Rad Air 2 tutorial. This time we're going to cover the legendary Rad Air 2 visual panel mode. So um, in the past videos, we first covered visual mode, and then we covered visual graph mode, which was VV. And then now we're going to cover uh, visual panel mode, which is uh, super awesome. And it's possible to highly configure Rad Air to look like a lot of other debuggers that you're used to, um, such as like GDB PETA or like Pwn Debug or in my case like Ollie Debug and things like that. And it's just awesome to be able to do that because a lot of times what happens is when you start using a new debugger, things are not placed visually where you're used to. So like for me, I came from like a background using Ollie Debug and then X64 Debug on Windows. And when you're debugging using those debuggers, you know, you're used to your stack being in a certain spot. Like I'm used to my stack being in the bottom right corner. I'm used to my registers being in the top right corner. And I'm used to my hex dump being in the bottom and I'm used to my disassembly being over here in the top left. And, um, you know, when you start using another debugger, it can be kind of a hassle because a lot of times you have to try to get used to where things are positioned in that debugger. And what's cool about Red Air is you don't actually have to do that. You don't have to force yourself to do that because it has this thing called visual panel mode, which allows you to arrange things exactly how you want and, and have fine control over them. And you can see that here. I've basically arranged this to look like what I'm used to, which is um, my standard like Ollie debug, X64 debug layout. Like I just explained, so you can see here, I have my disassembly, my registers, my stack memory, and then uh, my hex dump down here. And what's neat is you can you can configure the size of these windows just like you could in a GUI application. Um, but it actually ends up being kind of easier to work with in a GUI application and it's much faster as well because you're not having to, you know, load all that window code and, and stuff like that. So um, another thing that I want to point out that's cool about this visual panel mode is you actually have sort of a GUI interface. Like I can I can actually click things here. So if I click here, this is going to be the active window. If I click here, that's going to be the active window. Now I don't really like clicking because as I do um, the command line stuff more, I find it to be more intuitive and quicker to not click. So I don't, I'm probably not really going to ever use that, but I just wanted to mention that you can do that. And there's menus up here, just like in a typical GUI program. So you can actually click file and you can, so you can do different things like save the layout, um, load things, quit the program. Um, there's the settings, there's edit, pretty much anything you'd usually be able to do in a typical GUI interface you can do here in this visual panel mode, which is really cool. Um, and then another thing that I want to bring up is that there are tabs. So I'll show you in one second, but you can see here at the top right that I have uh, the tabs. Uh, there's tab one and tab two right now. And so I can switch to tab two and right now I'm on tab one. So if I hit the lowercase T key and then I hit, see, it tells you what your options are up here. And if I hit N for next, now I even have um, more stuff that I can see here. Um, so for example, I have my sections, I have my imports, and then um, I have a couple of these other windows, but we can actually tweak and modify this. So, um, but what I want to do is actually start off from scratch so you can see how to get into this mode because it's a little bit tricky and then it can be tricky to actually create this stuff and set it up. So I'm going to tell you all the hotkeys that do it quickly. That way you don't try to figure this out because there's a documentation for it, but the documentation doesn't have all the commands listed. And so it's not really that easy to figure out. So what I'm going to do here is switch to my other, um, Tmux view. And then I'm just going to go ahead and open up a program in it. So in fact, I'm already attached in the other one. So I'll just open up a separate program. I'll just open up this program. So um, I'm going to open up the stack fun here. So I'm going to do R2 dash D dash uh, AA for analyze and then uh, stack fun like this. And then we'll have a new instance loaded here.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is type, well, first thing I'm going to do is type AFL and then uh, tilde main to try to find my main function. And then I'm going to go ahead and just say db main, put a breakpoint at main. And then I'm going to hit V for visual mode, uh, lowercase p, lowercase p. And this is the view we were looking at before where we have the stack and then the registers and then the disassembly here. And so now what I'm going to do is hit F9, uh, let's see, to run in main. So now we're in main. You can see we're at this address here with our instruction pointer in the debugger. So now this is the, the key thing. So what you're going to do is you're not going to open up the command prompt. You're just going to hit shift uh, exclamation point or just type exclamation point. And that's going to enter in this visual panel mode. So you can see here by default, the disassembly view is the main panel. And then you have your stack view up here. And then uh, you have your register view down here. So let me go back to um, where we were before. I just hit dot, dot brings us back to, I don't know why it moved, but we're back to where the instruction pointer was here. And so, and then you also only have one tab by default open. So um, let's go over how to rearrange things to look like how I had it in the other binary that I had already open. So um, first of all, pressing the tab key switches between the active window. So you can see here my disassembly is active because it's highlighted in a blue border. And then now my stack panel is uh, active because it's highlighted. And then my register panel because I hit tab again, now my register panel is active. So to go back to disassembly, the active window is what's going to be um, working with your your uh, navigation key. So when I hit like up or down arrow or J and K, I'm going up and down in this active window. So if I were to switch here and I could actually scroll down, which I can't right now, but if I could, then I would uh, hit J and K and it would scroll up and down. So what I want to do now is I don't want the stack to be up here. So the key thing here that you need to do is uh, go to your the active window that you want to modify. So in this case, I want to modify the stack window. And then you hit uh, the double quote key, which is, you know, shift quote key. And then this gives you this nice menu and you can pick. These are all the different options that you could change each panel to. There's a ton of options, really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this one to registers. So you can see here now I have two register panels. So I don't want that anymore. So I'm going to hit tab again, make this register panel active, hit double quote again. And now I'm going to go down here and pick stack. So there we go. So now the stacks is a little down there. So it's starting to look more like OLED debugger x64 debug or even like Evans debugger in Linux. So now what are we missing? So now we're, we're missing the, um, the heap or the hex dump. So in order to get that hex dump view, um, there's a couple things we could do. Um, you could go up to the menu here and uh, click view and then click it. But then it's going gonna, it's gonna to create a new window in a kind of a weird spot because I think it usually it like splits this one by column by default, which I don't want. So um, what I do to solve this issue is just so I'm selecting this disassembly view because I want to have my uh, hex dump panel down here at the bottom of the screen. And so what you do is you just type hyphen. So um, it's not shift hyphen, it's just regular plain old hyphen. And what that does is it's gonna do a horizontal split. So what it did is it split this disassembly panel into two panels horizontally. And now I'm gonna hit tab to select this bottom panel here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type that double quote and then I'm going to go down here and um, select hex dump. And there we go. So now it looks a lot like that other one that we were looking at earlier. Because I have my, my hex dump view, my disassembly view, my registers, and my stack. So now the next thing is like let's say I don't want my hex dump view to be this big, you know, it, maybe I want to have more disassembly and less hex dump view. So in order to do that, what we could do here is you hit the W, lowercase W, 
and that enters something called window mode. You can see right here. Now it says HJKL moves around the panels, but we don't want to do that. Um, it doesn't say it up here, but what you can do is you can use shift or capital HJKL to resize the panels. So what I'm going to do now as I'm holding shift and then um, I'm, I'm hitting J and J you can see here it now it's going to expose more of this assembly pane and it's going to um, decrease the size of the hex dump pane, which is what I wanted to do. And you could do that with any of them. So if I hit tab here, I can, I could do that. Or if I, so I'm going to hit tab the stack and I'm going to actually grow the stack pane upwards. So I'm, I'm holding shift and then pressing K and I'm moving my stack up because I don't need all that space in the registers. And so if I wanted to see more stack, remember I could, I could actually change that option. Um, I would basically go um, type colon and then do E stack dot size and then equals and then I would make it greater. Right now it's, it's 256 bytes, but I can make it larger if I wanted to. So if I do 512, um, let's see, I might have to actually recreate this stack here, but um, that's how you can control the stack size that uh, Red Air actually parses. So, um, the, now let's let's go ahead and create a new tab. So to create the new tab, what you do, so I'm gonna exit window mode. You can see here, uh, it says Q, quit the mode. So I'm exiting window mode. Now I'm gonna hit lowercase t, and then you can see here it says T, new. Uh, so lowercase t just creates a new tab. And then uppercase T creates the new tab with the current panel. So if I, if I hit lowercase t, basically what it's gonna do is clone this tab. So now um, we're still on tab one. So if I wanna go to the next tab, I'm gonna hit lowercase t again. And now you can see it says N for next or P for prev. So if I hit an N, see now uh, tab two is actually uh, highlighted. And so actually what it did is it created the new tab with the original configuration, um, the default configuration with the stack up here again. So we can reconfigure all of this. Um, and by the way, if you want to close one of these panes, you hit uh, Shift X, um, like right here. So if this is the active pane. So if you want to close it, we could hit Shift X and it would close it out. Um, I don't really want to close it though. What I want to do is I want to display different information. So I'm going to hit um, double quote again, and then I'm going to scroll down here. And um, let's say instead of having disassembly view, I want to see the, the files imports. So I'm going to select imports there and then I'm going to hit tab over and I'm going to hit double quote again. And then let's say we want to see, actually, you know what, tell you what, tell you what, this is what we're going to do. Um, let's see, let me go back. Okay. So there's not that many imports, so it's kind of a waste of screen real estate. So I'm going to hit double quote and instead I'm going to put strings here, strings in the whole bin. There we go. And then remember, um, we should be able to hit, J to move down here so we can scroll through all of our strings. And then I'm gonna to go to the stack view here and I'm gonna hit a double quote. And this is where I'm gonna put the imports since there's not that many imports. And then I'm gonna hit tab again, go down the register view, double quote again. And then um, I'll put something else here that could be useful. Um, what do we wanna put here? Let's see, what's summary? Okay, it's not very useful. Um, maybe I'll just put symbols here. Symbols. There we go. So now we can see all the symbols in the binary. So I'm scrolling down with J here and scroll through all the symbols. So it's cool because um, at this point, I have a lot of information at my fingertips. So I can press T and then P to go back here. And then um, I can, you know, view all these, I can view the disassembly, I can view the registers, I can view the hex stop of the stack. And then I could hit T and then I could hit N to go here and view all this information. So if you're, from, if you're used to sort of like your typical GUI navigation and you don't always want to do command line, navigation and, and command line ways of getting information you could set up these panels and you can have a whole bunch of tabs not just two tabs um, it's very useful and convenient 
And um, another thing too is, you know, like you could actually, you could save the layout so that we could load this so we don't have to keep doing this every time you start a new session or uh, open up a new binary. So um, that's what I wanted to show you in this video. Hope you find this useful. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else you would need to know really. Um, there are other commands. I'll probably put the documentation link in the description. Um, like, you know, for the sp split commands, you can split vertically and horizontally. We covered horizontally using the hyphen. Um, the vertical, I think, is like the pipe, uh, the pipe command. And then, uh, yeah, that should, that should get you on your way um, to work with the binary in a more familiar interface. So once again, if you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and we'll have more videos coming. Thank you for watching.